So let's get started. Hey, do you remember a long time ago, I told you this is something you might not use now, but in about a week or so, I'm gonna, two weeks or so, I'm going to show you how to apply this and you're going to be using it for the rest of your math lives. You remember that? It's called distribution. We're going to kind of go over distribution again. Otherwise known as a distributed property. Now, here's what the distributed property said for you. It said if I had a number and it was multiplied by some quantity inside of some parentheses being added or subtracted, like we have up here. I told you there was two ways to do this. I told you most of the time we're going to be using order of operations. And what we do here is just do the 4 plus 3, you get how much? And then we multiply that by 2, and what's our final answer here? Are you guys alive today? Yeah. Okay, let's get going. You get 14, are you with me? Now, I also gave you another option or another way that you could get the same answer. And the way that you get the same answer was, if I took this number and I multiplied it by 3, then I added and multiplied it by 4. Notice the 2 is getting multiplied by 3, the 2 is getting multiplied by 4. If I do that, I should and will get the same exact answer. So let's see if that works. Uh, everybody, multiply what's the 2 and 3 and the 2 and 4 and yeah. then add those two? Right, so we have 2 times 3, we also have 2 times 4, and then we're going to add them. Okay. So distribution says this, whether you add first or multiply first doesn't matter as long as you multiply by every term inside of your parentheses. Let's see if it works out the same. Uh, what's our 2 times 3? 6. Plus eight gives us hey, exactly what we were just talking about. It will give you the same answer. Now, a lot of you were wondering back then, you're like, well, Mr. Leonard, why in the world would you even do this? Why can't you just add 4 plus 3, get 7, and multiply by 2? That's exactly what we would do every single time if we had just numbers. Question? Two times four. Yeah, the yeah. two times, it has to go to both of them. So we're taking the times the first one and the second one. Okay. Anybody else have a question on, on this part? Because I have to have you be clear here before I go on. Richard, if you're okay with this distribution. Good, all right. So, like I was saying, you were probably wondering why we even do this when we could just add three plus four, get seven, multiply by two, and get 14. That's what you would do if you had numbers every time. However, a lot of times you're going to have variables. And this is where the distribution, uh, distributed property really shines, is when I have that. So I'm going to give you this in general. This works every single time. You have a number or any expression outside of parentheses. So in general means without any numbers up there. Just using variables. We can distribute anything we want to. Here's the way you do it. Please watch closely up here. I need to make sure that you really get this before we go any, any further. You can't see right now? We can't see. Okay. How about this? Make it better? If you look up here, we took the 2 times the 3, and we also took the 2 times the 4. In general, that's the way you do distribution. You take whatever value is out here. In our case, it's A. We take A times our B, our first term. Then we take our A times our C. The sign in here is typically what you're going to get over here as well. So if we're doing A times B, we're also going to add A times C. So just like here, instead of A, B, and C, we had 2, 3, and 4, we're going to do the A times the B and the A times the C. Do you guys see the similarity between this example and the previous one? Yeah. Now we can't go any further with this. We just have A, B, and A, C. But this is the way we do distribution all the time, which is kind of nice. Here, here. We multiply the outside term times each of the inside terms. We're going to start off slowly. We're going to do this step by step. I'll show you exactly how to do it. Then I'll give you some shortcuts once we really understand this. Would you like that? Yeah. Okay, so first comes like the real nitty gritty math stuff where we, I teach you all about how this works exactly and then I'm going to show you ways we can shortcut it.
This problem illustrates why we even have the distrib distrib distributed property. Here we could have added these. Can you add 4 plus x? Yes. No. Are they like terms? No. no. Then can you add them? No. If they're not like terms, you can't add them. So we can't even combine these. The only way to get rid of the parentheses in this case is through distribution. Are you with me, folks, on why we even have distribution? Otherwise, you couldn't go any further. You'd just be done. So in our case, we're going to follow this along. Just like we did the 2 times the 3 and the 2 times the 4, we're going to take the 2 times the 4. We've got a plus sign, so we're going to write a plus sign. And we're going to do the 2 times the x. As long as you're taking the outside factor times each of the inside terms, you'll have this right. You just got to make sure your multiplication is correct. So let's do our multiplication here. What's our first term going to be? A plus how much? 2x. Two. Two With an x? No. No, no x? Because you're multiplying the x. So what's 2, two times, times x? 2x. Two 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 yeah, we got 2x. Two, 2 times x is 2x. This still means 2 times x. Can you combine those? Yeah. No. Can you get like 10x? No. no. No, this is like the $8 and two, sorts of x, xylophones. It's like $8 and two xylophones. Add those together, what do you get? You still have $8 and two xylophones. <laughs> That's it. So we're done. That's as far as we can go. That's how our distributive property works. I'd like you to try this a couple times. Just to make sure you get this understanding down, okay? Give us a try. Remember what we're doing. We're taking the outside factor times each of the inside terms. I'll be walking around. If you're not really clear on what's going on, please let me know. You know, a lot of times what people do to show what you're distributing, they'll go ahead, they'll circle this number out front. They'll say, oh, that's what I'm distributing. This is what I'm distributing here, is that 2 and that 9, respectively. Uh, the reason why we do this is because when we get into some negatives, you always want to distribute with the sign. That's very, very important. So we're going to get into this habit right now of circling the number out in front of our parentheses to make sure that's what we're taking in. Are you with me, folks? Yeah. Okay. You sure? So let's go ahead and distribute. Remember, when you're distributing, it has to go to not just the first one, but also the second term. So when we do this, we're going to get 9 times y. Then we get our plus 9 times 2. Would you raise your hand if you got exactly that on your paper? Good. Let's simplify this a little bit to actually do the math on it. 9 times y gives me how much? 9 y. Plus 18. Can you combine those? No. That is as good as you can do. So this is our answer. Okay, last one I have up here. We'll circle the 3. We'll circle that number with the sign in front of it. Now, of course, it's positive, so it doesn't have a sign. We'll multiply that by both of them. So the first thing we should get is 3 times 4a. Do you have 3 times 4a? Yes. Yeah. Now that we know how to multiply those, that's not our problem. And then we'll have our plus sign, 3 times 1. We'll just take our factor out here times our term in there. And we'll get how much? 12 a. And? 3. 3. Plus 3. Good. They're not like terms. You can't combine them. You're done. Would you raise your hand feel okay with what we're doing so far? Um, the 3 times the 4a, you can, you can times that, though. You can add. 
don't, I don't understand what you mean. Because you said because you said they're not like terms or whatever, but right when you're multiplying, we didn't really have that situation. From last time, we did um, we did four times like six x, if you remember. I said the reason why we can multiply these two things together is because of the associative property of, of multiplication. What we said is this is multiply and that's multiply. Multiplication doesn't really care how we group it. So really, we could reorder this and do instead of four times six times x, I could do four times six times x, and it's the same thing. I can regroup that. Then we get the 24 times x or 24x. So basically, in layman's terms, yeah, you can multiply numbers of those. So it could be six times four x too. Could you switch it like that? Or no? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. Six times four x means it's the same thing because it's commutative, right? The six yeah. and the four doesn't that doesn't matter. That's different than addition. If you try to add four plus six x, yeah, see that's what different story. Time, time, different story. Time. That's like terms, okay? So if we don't have like terms, you cannot combine them. You can't add them or subtract them. Um, the only thing you can do is, if you have multiplication, that's where they don't have to be exactly the same. That's a good question. Yeah, good question. Any other questions before we get going? Okay. I'm going to make sure you are so good at this that it's not even funny. Uh, the reason is because you're going to eventually get to Math C, and some of you might actually be in my class if you dare to take me again. <laughs> if you dare. And you're going to be doing this right from the first week of school all the way through the end of the semester. You've been doing problems that look exactly like this. And I'm still fighting people who really weren't taught the right way or really didn't have the concept down. Maybe they were taught the right way. They just forgot how to do it. I fight that all the way through Math C. I fight that all the way to Calculus. So I make sure when I teach this class, you guys are 100% on this. And if you're not, I ain't going to pass you. So you've got to be 100% on distributing this type of stuff. I'm not sure if you understand what I just said. I'm not going to pass you if you can't do this. You've got to be able to distribute this correctly. So I'm going to make sure you guys know it today and know it good. You ready for it? Here's how we distribute. Just like from before, we circle the number in front of it and we take it to both of our terms. We're going to do that here. Here's where people make a mistake. Okay? What people do is they go, oh, I'm distributing the 4. That's not entirely true. You are distributing 4, but notice how it's a negative 4. That number negative 4 has to go to both terms. So while here we have number plus number, that's what we got. We're going to have number plus, but that negative is going to be distributed. We will end with a minus sign on the second term, I, I promise you. We have to make sure that we're distributing the number with the sign. That's why we circle that number with the sign in front of it. So we're not just distributing positive 4, we're actually distributing negative 4. Raise your hand if you see the difference there. In the back, yes? Okay. So we're distributing negative 4 here. It does get multiplied by both terms, so we'll do negative 4 times 2a. You can show it like that if you'd like. Negative 4 times 2a. Plus, because we had a plus sign. We're not going to have 4 times 3. What are we going to have times negative 3? Negative 4. Negative 4 times 2a. Negative 4 times 3. Now we get to do our multiplication piece by piece. So tell me something, folks. Negative 8a. Yeah? 